What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be taking a look at a title called Dread Delusion. We had the pleasure of taking a look at this game about a year ago when it first released into early access and the game has had a number of developments since then. It's had a number of things added, so I figured it was time for a visit and a touch up and take a look at this gorgeous world that we're, okay, it's kind of low poly, but you know, the skybox looks really good and the color palette's well selected. Uh, this is an open world RPG, sort of in the vein of something like Morrowind, I guess, when it comes to theme. It's an odd, strange world that in a lot of ways reminds me of Warhammer 40k, mixed with some Aeon Flux in there, mixed with Morrowind. It's drawing on a lot of influences, but in this game, you are a warrior that has been let out of prison by the Inquisition to track down a notorious outlaw that runs an entire mercenary band that's causing big problems for the kingdom. And in the process of tracking her down and killing her or capturing her, you're going to have a whole bunch of adventures along the way. This is a strange post-apocalyptic world where the entire planet has been fragmented into floating islands. And these floating islands attract these things called the Neuron Stars. And the Neuron Star is actually not up right now. I think it's over there. There it is. That's the Neuron Star. It's basically this universe's version of a sun. Uh, every single island is kind of near a neuron star and orbits it and the day night cycle is dictated by the fluctuations and pulsations of the neuron star some islands have days that are 20 years long some islands are in perpetual night the ones we're on luckily enough are kind of like standardized we have like a day and a night cycle but as of right now, welcome to the game. Uh, if after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I've got a link for you down below to the early access of Dread Delusion. You can check that out. And then, of course, on top of that, you can take a look down there to find your way to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. Pretty strong chance on the day that this video goes live, we'll start a new game and I can show you how I got to the point that I'm at and we'll stream it for like four hours, see if we can get into some trouble. I'm about two hours into the game right now, I guess. I didn't want to do the beginning portion of the game any longer because you've seen that the last time I showed off the game and honestly I feel like that video failed to capture the true attributes of what this game is trying to be but this time around I've played for a couple of hours and I've got a much better feel for what the game is what the game wants to be and what the game's strengths and weaknesses are, and I'll try to put those together at the end. So what am I doing right now inside Dread Delusion? Well, Dread Delusion is kind of a curious game in the respect that this is a title where you don't really have a map, you don't really have a compass. Every now and again, you'll find these compasses right here that will tell you what the cardinal directions are, but you don't have those readily available to you for right now. And so my first priority on coming on into the game was to resolve the beginning tutorial quests and do some various wandering and get a feel for for the combat and whatnot, but I'm starting to undertake some quests so that I can level up and get stronger. Character development in this game is fairly simple, but it is required. Like, it is a requisite thing you're going to have to do if you want to get further on into the game, and so I'm doing a quest for the Cartographer's League to see, ooh, free coins, uh, to see if I can help them map the area, and in return, they have promised to give me a copy of that map, which would make my life oh so much easier. Uh, I think up there is the inn. Yeah, I think I know where I am right now. I think where I need to go, the cartographer has requested a couple of things. They want me to map some landmarks. One of them I know where it is. So they were looking for a ruin that was surrounded by a tree. I know where that is. It's over here to the left. So we're going to go get ourselves into trouble in the goblin lands and see if we can get that charted uh, for the game. Now, there is a goblin over here. I can already see him wandering around. We're going to be very careful on our approach. The combat in this game is honestly not that complicated. Uh, you can beat most of the things in the game just by swinging your sword and backpedaling. Like, you see what I mean right there? Like, you can kind of, like, do, like, a backpedal almost. I'm going to get some stamina back real quick. There's a hit. Oh, that one counted, huh? Okay, fair enough. I felt like I was far enough away. Don't you leash, bro. Don't you leash. Uh, this right here is a goblin, by the way. This is what goblins look like in this universe. They've got kind of like a Miyazaki uh, no-face thing going on. And that's for a reason, actually. In the lore, this game, what it excels at, in my opinion, is in world building. Uh, every single character in this game has kind of like a troubled past because they live in a troubled universe where nothing is guaranteed and basically everyone is a cynic and everyone is sort of slowly going insane because, like, nobody really dies. There's lore books and things all over the place and the lore on the goblins is they committed a tremendous crime against the universe like centuries ago 
And so now they've been driven to madness by that crime, and they carve wooden masks for themselves to pretend to not be goblins. And so they've, they've got a little bit of like a, a FromSoft vibe, where some of the critters can be kind of creepy and crawly. I'm going to fire some magic at this dude. There we go. Knocked him out pretty quick with my Hadouken. Sometimes you got to take somebody down with a Hadouken, man. Uh, this is the ruin, I think, that is surrounded by a tree. So I think we need to map this. I've got this map book right here, and there it is. Our map has been upgraded. We have created a chart in our cartography notebook. This chart is enchanted with a cipher to magically update even if the landscape changes. Yeah, so for the magical, basically for the mages guild, what I'm doing right now is because the islands are constantly orbiting and changing their configuration, it makes any type of cartography incredibly difficult in this universe. But one mage has an idea. He's creating what is effectively, if you've ever seen Harry Potter, how they have the portraits that move and, and like basically capture a moment or capture someone's soul. He's created one of those that's a map. It's a map that shifts along with the actual realities of the universe by creating kind of magical anchors that it tracks. That thing, you can actually harvest silk off of it. This game has a crafting system. That's a silkworm. Lots of weird things in this game. I haven't messed around with these mods yet. I don't know if they're hostile. Uh, it looks like they are indeed quite hostile. Oh, he's firing bullets at me. That's not good. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm just gonna, like, use one of those real quick. He's got, like, homing bullets. I don't know how to deal with this. I'm gonna use one of these right here, too. A little bit of mana potion just to get me going. Alright, mana potion's been taken care of. I'm gonna run up on this dude strapped. It looks like he's pretty squishy. It's just closing the gap is like the hard thing to pull off. I guess it's some kind of pet that the goblins keep. Now I feel kind of guilty. Now I feel like I'm kind of a bad person. But the goblins committed a crime against the universe. So, like, I don't feel that guilty about it. This game is big on exploration. Uh, this is 100% a game that is tailored towards explorers when it comes to the scanner box rewards that players are expecting from their RPG experience. Uh, this is a game that does not have a tremendous amount of character building. It does not have a tremendously in-depth amount of customization to your character. What stats exist and what level ups exist and what things are expected of you for advancement inside the confines uh, of its level up system are mostly the, just there to act as breadcrumbs to force you to explore more and to do more quests uh, and they also kind of reinforce that so basically the way development works in this game is you don't get xp for killing monsters you only get xp for finding xp so there are like these big ghostly skulls that are on the map here and there and if you loot those it will fill up your xp meter and they're called shards of delusion they're basically what's left over when someone going mad from this world passes away and inside those delusions, you find truths, which is how the game justifies you developing and becoming stronger. And then the other way that you get more delusions is by doing quests. Uh, in doing quests, you end up getting XP as well. And when you level up, you'll come over to this screen, and it's very simple. You just add a point to your stats. Each of your stats is linked to a couple of these skills over here. Every time you level it up, that skill gets plus five. They don't develop from you using them or anything else. Some of them can be advanced by putting on equipment. Uh, so if you're wearing, like, wizard robes, your lore and your spell cast will go up. If you're wearing thiefy outfits, you'll have lockpick and agility go up. But character development in this game is very simple. Now, there are skill tests all over the map to test like your lore or to test your thievery or to test something else and those almost always lead to even further delusions and so this game has sort of this curious pattern that I've noticed where when you hit a certain threshold with one of your skills like I'm really good at charming people you'll get a whole bunch of skill points basically because you've hit the threshold where a lot of the where a lot of the challenges seem to be at, and you can kind of ping pong in between these challenges you've been keeping track of, which will give you a lot of level ups very rapid fire, effectively. And so, that's kind of the way that the game breadcrumbs you around and, like, makes you want to explore more. We've charted one of our locations. Now I need to find a spot where the river splits. They said, so if I go to the north, let me check my quest real fast for this cartography thing. Actually, there is not anything to the north as far as I can tell, so we need to go to the east and find a large farmstead. 
let's go ahead and do that. But yeah, this game is chock-a-block with exploration. That's probably the reason why I like this game so much is just the sheer volume of exploration. Now, the one thing I think some people are going to stub their toes on, this game has a very unique sort of rendering style. I've got most of the graphical filters disabled right now because I prefer visual clarity over everything else. I've never been a big fan of things like depth of field or pixelated filters or things that add this game adds like an artificial wobble which i think used to exist in games like morrowind and whatnot uh, in order to save memory space like the hardware of the time couldn't keep up with the fact that it was rendering too many 3d objects and so it developed sort of like this wobble in order to save visual memory uh, but anyways i've disabled all that stuff if you wanted to see what it looks like i can turn on all the default stuff real fast and that's what the game looks like with everything on default. It kind of adds like a bit of a wobble and a bit of an animation and a bit of a pixelation to everything. But I found that everything just looked better if I got rid of all that and I preferred it this way. I do appreciate the fact that they've added those toggles to the game because visual filters are not always to the liking of every single player that gets into a game like this. I, I find that a lot of games, I think, limit their audience a little bit by going with very aggressive visual styles that cannot be disabled and so I always recommend that if you're going to go with something that applies a lot of over the surface filters and a lot of things that sort of add jitter and add pixelation and add kind of fog and stuff like that you always allow them to be toggled and turned off so that you're servicing multiple parties at the same time some people like those sort of artistic gestures inside a game some people do not who are you and what you doing with all that cake what's up I do my duty as an agent. God worship is outlawed and these people are violating apostatic law. But it's hard not to sympathize. The famine is bad here and the people are starving. It's clear the union isn't doing enough to help. I don't blame these people for looking for a solution. I don't blame them, but I will punish them. Yeah, so like, I, I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet, but it seems like the worship of gods in this universe led to like the cataclysm that fractured everything and destroyed everything, whether that was by a conflict between the gods or whether that was by, you know, one thing or another hasn't really been explained. But in this universe, uh, we are a member of the Inquisition. The Inquisition basically hunts anybody that worships gods to avoid a further cataclysm. And so there's basically a zero tolerance policy for any type of faith in this game. Uh, you're not allowed to have it because the last time we had that, it destroyed the entire world. And so there's kind of this, there's kind of this push and pull where there's a lot of innocent people being hanged and you're going to find a lot of people in gibbet cages and whatnot because the realm is going through kind of a bad time and when bad things happen, people reach out to the divine. It is what it is. Uh, can I sleep in this bed? I can sleep in this bed. Let's do that. We'll take it till morning. Sometimes you get robbed in your sleep. I don't know why it happens. Uh, there, there's like this random event that occurs from time to time whenever you sleep in a bed where it's like, oh yeah, you were robbed in your sleep. Ha ha. Like, there, there's no check or anything to stop it from happening, as far as I know. It's one of those old-school things the game does. Bastards, the Union will pay for what they've done. Five years ago, they came and outlawed all the priests. Since then, the crops have withered, the cattle have died. The rich folk in town buy imported food. But out here, we're starving. Even the bell tower has crumbled with nobody to repair it. And now, they've sent in their guard dogs to finish the job. Yeah, what the Union is doing is terrible, and I want to help. Oh, I need 30 charm to do that. I'm sorry, but I don't know you. You could be working for the Inquisition, not that I have anything to hide. What is my charm right now? I thought my charm was higher than that. Oh, my charm is only 20. I thought my charm was much higher than that. Okay. There's a hat that I can buy in town that'll give me plus 10 charm, so I'm not too worried about my low charm levels. Uh, these little challenges are not marked on any kind of map or journal. This game is really old school. It seems to take pride in being really old school. And so this is a game that I would recommend playing with a notebook and just kind of like jotting down notes about the stuff you've found all around the universe because every single one of those skill checks will lead to a quest or it'll lead to a treasure or it'll lead to something good. And if you, if you forget about it, you forget about it. What's going on in here? The Inquisition agent is watching a body swing from the gallows with grim fascination. Cultists riddle these hills like vermin. Whenever we lift a rock, a dozen scuttle out. Anyone could be secretly devout. Watch yourself, stranger. Our eyes are on you, too. Okay. Uh, basically, anybody that has a religion in this game is called a cultist. Uh, let's get on out of here. And we needed to find the largest farm plot. 
we are in the east right now. I don't see any other farm plots. There's a little one right there. I'm kind of wondering if this guy is our large farm plot, and then we can move on to something else. Ooh, crafting material. Uh, this game does have a crafting system. It's very simple. It's just alchemy. You pick up random things from all over the map, and you turn them into health potions, mana potions, stamina potions, that kind of stuff. Uh, the game also has a... I wouldn't call it a weapon crafting system. Instead, I would call it a upgrading system. So the game seems to follow kind of like a tempo where when you go to shops, you get like the crappiest version of a weapon. And as you adventure and explore around, you'll find ores, both mundane and magical, that allows you to upgrade your weapons and armor by going to a crafting workbench. That's what I've seen in two hours is that most of the shops have really crappy equipment, but every single piece of crappy equipment can be upgraded to be super awesome if you just have enough of the materials to do it. Like my sword right now used to be a rusted out piece of junk, and if you're wondering what that looked like, go watch my last video. I'm going to see if it lets me chart this area right here because I think this might be the spot that I want to chart. It is indeed the spot that I want to chart. Uh, this game is immersive. All of the quest items, like our cartographer's book or like casting spells, does cause a Hexen-style animation where like a book comes out and you actually do some charting and whatnot. The other things that we need to find now... Oh, there's a goblin on the road. Are they fighting? I think they are, but I think they're bugged out. That's a really big gobbo, dude. That thing is huge. Ow, okay. I'm going to shoot a magic at him. There we go. Taste my magic. A little bit of gold off the guard and a health potion just to fix what ails you. That's nice. Hey, there we go. And the cartography book is actually filling in a map. I didn't notice this till just now. I was playing around with the M key just to see if it was doing anything. Me doing all this cartography. And there you go. Beautiful. I think we're, like, over here right now, but we've almost got this area mapped on out. It looks like it also gives you little details like uh, trees and things of that nature. So, yeah, once they give you the cartography book, it's a really good idea that anytime the game says something in the top right corner that's like, this looks like an interesting place, you should probably break out the book and go ahead and map it because it is actively filling in your map right now, which is super sweet. I need to find that waypost over here and figure out what direction is south. I think this is south. I would also appreciate it if we get a compass at some point, but that hasn't happened just yet. Uh, there's south. So to the south, it says the river forks. The good news is we're up on a high vista right now, so we should be able to see that no problem. Can't tell if there's a fork over that way. In my experience, there's not really fall damage, but I'm still a little bit apprehensive about just, like, flinging myself off cliffs. Like, I haven't taken fall damage yet, no matter how far I've fallen, but it may exist past a certain threshold. And since the save system in this game is kind of constrained, like, I can't save whenever I want in this title. You have to sleep, or you have to enter a new zone, or you have to interact with, like, these teleport crystal things. Uh, once you do that, the game saves. But up until then, does this work? The lift is not yet active. Okay, so that's just another path to the city. That up there is a city where there's shops and guards and quests and, you know, bounty notices and things like that. I've got them all collected right now. Oh, this is the spot where the river forks. I think this is it. Let's go ahead and do our cartography. There are no landmarks nearby to mark on your chart. Are you sure? Because the river is definitely forking right here. Like, it's forking super hard. Like, it's forking in public. Well, I couldn't find any spot right there where it forks to actually do any cartography. So I think for right now, our goal is going to be to Skyrim our way down this wall. But it looks like we've got something that looks like a goblin marsh over here that we may have to deal with. Let me blast that dude real quick. There we go. Perfect. He's now down. Did he drop anything? Oh, nice. He gave me a lockpick. I do think that they could improve, so instead of the enemies just disappearing, I would recommend they consider maybe making the enemies sink into the ground or to do, like, a little poof, uh, and the loot kind of, like, pops out of them when they do the poof. Instead, what it's got right now is a little bit low rent. Uh, what'll happen is this looks like an interesting landmark. Well, if the game says so, I'll break out my book. There we go. Cartography time. It looks like we just kind of hit a landmark. Oh, yeah, we're down here. Okay. 
I'm gonna look around. Ooh, we've got some kind of machinery right here. What is this? It's a lore check. Unfortunately, I do not have very good lore. That's not a skill that I have a lot of. But we did get five bucks right there. So, you know, if you love five bucks, if you like if you like five bucks, put your hands in the air. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, everybody loves five bucks. Five bucks is great. I believe I have found the spot where the river forks. So I guess that fork up there was not, it was not the fork up we were looking for, all right? It was a forked up situation. Uh, let's go ahead and we will head on back and we'll turn this quest in because I've got all four of the charts that the wizard wanted from me in order to begin his project of charting what could not be charted. So I believe the gentleman that I'm looking for is back over this way. I think this is going to be our guy. Our winner, winner, chicken dinner. The guy that makes this quest thing happen. And frankly, I'm looking for some character advancement. After this, we'll go back up to the city. Maybe I'll do some light purchasing, possibly, just to see if I can like get my stats increased a little bit. Because at the moment, I'm not really good at anything. And unfortunately, the truth that I've had to learn to live with is that most of the challenges are too high for me, unfortunately. But this is our guy. Scholar seems engaged or engorged with studies. You're the fledgling cartographer. Not lost, I hope. Uh, I have cipher charts for you. Excellent. These are going to do great. The detail here is impressive for one of your limited experience. Please uh, take this in recompense. It seems that you've accrued quite the collection of cipher charts. I got to admit that I'm impressed. Take this. Uh, this is a letter of recommendation that's going to grant you entry to the erudite the Erudite Academy. Nice. You should speak to the chief cartographer. I'm pretty sure that he'll have work for someone like yourself. Okay. Nice, dude. I didn't expect them to give it up so quickly. Uh, so the Erudite Academy, it's that place right there. I can't get to it. I tried. That's one of the first places I tried to go because I heard that they were responsible for making magical maps. And I had not... So this was blank at that time, all right? It says you don't have a map until you get, like, the mapping quest, which I hadn't found yet, which is why I thought there was no map. Anyways, now that we have the map... I tried to get up there because I thought that was where I was going to get a map from. But when I went to the place where there's like a teleporter that takes you up to the Mage's Guild, there was a guy there that had just been rejected by the Mage's Guild that said that there was some idiot around trying to make a magic map that wasn't going to work and that the Mage's Academy was short-sighted because he invented a spell that was going to change the world and the spell that he invented was a spell that can make any animate or inanimate object sweat. And they were just failing to see the genius uh, that is his development process. To me, the map sounded a lot more useful, and so I instantly set out and was like, screw you, buddy, and went to go see if I can find the guy that's making the map because I want to be able to map things, but, you know. That tower right there, it looks like you can drop down from right there, and it's got, like, a drawbridge. One thing I think this game does really well is, like, this is one of those games that I think they probably played Breath of the Wild or they probably played... So this game is really good at landmarking. If you don't know what landmarking is, in any, like, open-world game, you don't... The one thing that makes, like, a player really disengaged from an open-world game is not knowing where to go or what to do next. Good open-world games will have things that are constantly visible on the horizon that you can see... And they have some kind of path to get there, but it's not immediately clear. Uh, that kind of stimulates the imagination, and it makes players want to explore. Now, this game is maybe a little bit overstocked uh, with points of interest that you can see. But, uh, I don't know if I want to jump to that. That might be risky. I don't know if I can even make that jump. I guess I could maybe try. Let's go! Okay, yeah, I did make it. Uh, there's a thief over here with a bow that wants to shoot me. So that's not fun. Oh my god, there's two of them. Give me the magic, give me the magic! Alright, you're dead. I'm getting beat up right now. I'm gonna hide behind this tree till I get my stamina back. And also, I'm gonna consider the merits of this red potion real, real fast. Just swish it around briefly. Ow! You shot through a tree! You animal. Uh, the apostatic union now considers you a friend, apparently, or at least accepted. I'm guessing these guys are cultists then. Oh, I don't have enough mana. Unfortunate. But as I said, like, pretty much every enemy in this game, you can kill them by backpedaling and swinging. 
Uh, it's because I don't think they have a whole lot of follow through to their forward movement. And it feels like they've tried to adjust for that by making the enemies have really uh, generous hitboxes, basically, for their weapons and for the bodies in the game. There is a parry system. You can press the F key like so, and you will parry and block. I haven't used it a ton, but it does seem like you get a considerable stun on an enemy when you block them. So lock picking in this game, fairly simple. You just roll a D6, and in rolling that D6, you either roll the right number or you don't roll the right number. I'm going to drink a mana potion real fast, just so I have a little bit of mana to play around with. Yeah, that's kind of... Uh-oh. Ow. Okay. Yeah, didn't mean to fall off there. That wasn't my plan. Now I need to get back up there. I sort of, like, panicked a little bit. I saw... All right, I saw blazing magic headed towards my face. And I was like, nope, this is not for me. Ow. Okay, yeah, I'm getting beat up right now. I'm not having the great... Wait, you reset? You don't want to fight anymore? Well, I was trying to block, but I guess that didn't work out. It looks like that one's leashed or something. I don't know. That's cool. Yeah, cross your throat and say you're going to kill me while I'm beating you in the face. Uh, I'm going to sleep in this bed real fast because I feel terrible and I need to get my meters filled back up. A sharp noise rouses you, groggy, you blink and awake. You are not alone in this place. Yeah, that definitely seems to be true. There we go. Drop them. Outlaws consider you disliked. That's probably not good because I found like a thieves guild inside the town down in the sewers and it was like the only place. Oh my god. Okay. I just want to sleep without being interrupted. I am totally fine and okay with slaughtering you guys like all day every day if that's how you want it to go. But I will heal back up to full. I will heal back up to full, and I will have no consequences for that heal. That's the way I live my life. So here's that wizard we were looking at. Oh, block my spell, maybe? All right, well, you're dead. Goodbye, apostate. That right there is XP. So we'll go ahead and loot that real fast. You have embraced a delusion. Use it to increase one of your attributes. Ooh, I got two of them for that one. That's never happened before. I've never gotten multi-delusion. Sweet, dude. Mm, I'll probably work on my lore a little bit. I feel like my lore has kind of, like, fallen behind. And the spells in this game seem to be really good. And so, I, I kind of want to work on my spells a little bit. Dark Star Mercenaries, Apostatic Union. A catch-all term for the Bears, Brigands, and Ruffians. I mean, they're Brigands and Ruffians, dude. What are we really worried about here? Is there anything to loot? Uh, boost agility. You get a massive boost of agility and prevents death from falling. Must be used with care, for while inhuman speed is a boon indeed, many a spellcaster has fallen from the flying continents in haste. Okay. Cool. Huh, there's a dead guy in a cave. I mean, I don't know if he's dead. I've seen guys that look like that that are actually alive. Looks like there was definitely some kind of dark sorcery or something happening in here. Ooh, my mana meter is way bigger now, too. Nice. Uh, if you want to slot in a spell, you can only have, I think, four spells at a time. You just slot them in like so. You also have potions. I should probably keybind those. There we go. So now I've got my potions keybound. How do I swap in between my potions? Uh, Z is apparently how I swap in between my potions. And you can press R to use a potion. Control swaps in between my spells, so that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. One down. Blast you up. And down you go. Let me get that sweet loot in your pockets. A throwing knife and a couple of bucks. What I'd like to do now is we've made a little bit of money. Oh, there's a silkworm over there, dude. I want to harvest it. Uh, silk is how you update your wizard's gear, and it's how you upgrade your thieves gear. Is you need cloth that's made out of the silkworm silk. 
Go to sleep, bro. Ooh, a shuriken. Never seen that one before. Anytime you pick up a weapon for the first time, it gives you like a little pop-up with like a little lore blurb. That's a new one. I hadn't seen it before. I'm going to try to make my way back to town. Hopefully I live. I want to go to the Mages Guild, too, and check that out now that I have a recommendation, but... Well, there's also a little goblin cave over here. I'm gonna check that out and see how that goes. Ow, the reach on this guy. The reach on him. He put a debuff on me, too. I don't know what the debuff does. I'm not bleeding, but it looks like a blood debuff. I don't know. A couple of goodies in here, though, including some cash. Very nice. 133 bucks. Yeah, we should definitely go to town. Oh, silkworm, dude. Nice. Silkworm. Got silk thread. But yeah, this is Dread Delusion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our little foray into the world of, I think, Oneira or the Oniran Isles, I think is what it called this thing. This is probably about the point in the video where I should sit down and kind of talk about the things that I do and I don't like about the current build of Dread Delusion and Early Access. Uh, on the front of things that I like, this game is heavily focused on exploration. If you're an explorer type, when it comes to the Skinner box that you occupy as an RPG player and you find it rewarding to find things, this game is absolutely squirrel-holed with all kinds of nooks and crannies that are full of treasure, full of things to discover, full of things to play around with. This game is an explorer's dream. However, that does come at a little bit of a cost in the current build. Uh, character generation and character customization, you're not going to find anything here that's as deep as something you would find from like a Baldur's Gate or like an Elder Scrolls game. Same for the crafting, same for the combat. A lot of those systems are pretty shallow. I did have some issues with hitboxes, largely with larger enemies, in fact, like the big goblins and whatnot. It felt like certain enemies were able to hit me from very far away, uh, and there was some weird hitbox stuff going on right there where perception-wise, you can definitely tell that no part of their model touched your model, but it still counted as a hit. And then when I would return fire at those guys with my sword, my sword would just go through them and not count. It happened a couple times, so I figured that I would call it out. Other than that, though, the soundtrack for this game is good. I really like the world and the lore building and the way that they show and they don't tell. I think that's a very strong decision. I think the game could do with a little bit more depth when it comes to the systems that support and encourage you to explore. So I would like to see the character building given a little bit more depth, whether that comes to adding runes to your spells to customize them further or engraving your weapons in your armor or just adding little branching paths when your abilities get to certain levels. Uh, that allow you to specialize further, get little bonuses, or kind of Fallout-style perks along the way. I think that would all be really nice. But at the moment, if you're looking for a game that's all about exploration, you don't mind the fact that combat can sometimes be a little tiny bit wonky, or that the animations are not necessarily the best, and that some of them have been recycled and things like that. You're just here to explore a world and learn about it and read the lore books and kind of learn about things from the quests that people are giving you and whatnot. I actually think Dread Delusion is a really good decision. For me personally, I like Dread Delusion because I'm an explorer. I don't really care about storyline in RPGs. I care about the exploration and I tend to care about the combat. And Dread Delusion delivers in that old school way on exploration at a really high level. In fact, I'm having trouble thinking about other RPGs that really encourage exploration the same way that this game does. And so I like that portion of it, and that to me is what's most important in an RPG. That's not going to be what's important for everybody, it's for me, so I ended up liking Dread Delusion. Still, hopefully they can tighten up the combat, hopefully they can add a few more layers of depth to the game's supporting systems, so that those things are equally as good as the exploration and the world building are, and if they can get that done, I'm definitely looking forward to checking back in on the game in the future. I will be streaming this game on the day that this video goes live, so you can watch me play for about four hours or so, and see kind of of how I went from the beginning of the game to where I got to right here. Uh, as you get further on into the game, there are access that you will get to things uh, like compasses and whatnot to help out with the mapping and all that kind of thing. And so don't worry about that. If earlier in the video I scared you off by saying that I didn't have a map and I didn't have a compass, but they keep telling me to go in directions, I just hadn't gotten to it yet. Later on, I found all that stuff. We found the mapping in this video. And then further on down the pipeline, I found where you get the compass from. And then exploring got way better. And it was easier to figure out where my quest objectives and whatnot were. 
My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out kind of a niche little RPG called Dread Delusion. This is a game that's definitely going its own way, and I'm here for it. I like a lot of what it has on offer, and I'm looking forward to checking in on it in another year or so in its early access if it's not actually out by then. Take care, everybody, and that's all I got for you. Bye, folks.